This conference will now be recorded. Hey, everybody. It's Monday at 1 o'clock, so it is time for our Monday through Thursday 1 o'clock podcast. This is the podcast where you will hear the truth about what actually happened in, in the uh, opioid crisis. What we do here is we review the science. What we're doing right now is we're going through page by page. We're going through the uh, second citizen petition that we have uh, submitted to the FDA and that the FDA has filed on regulations.gov. Uh, it, you can go back and listen to last week and you will see that we were talking about uh, uh, the line of demarcation between science and pseudoscience that the father of modern science, Dr. Karl Popper, did not feel that psychiatry was a real science. Uh, he felt that psychiatry was a pseudoscience. It was a wannabe. It was a poser. It's not real science. Uh, he felt that uh, psychiatry was on the same level as uh, horoscopes and astrology, mesmerism, hypnotism, those types of things. Uh, and the reason that Dr. Karl Popper said that about psychiatry uh, is because that psychiatry is basically based on opinions. It's based on observations. Uh, you see something, you form an opinion. And that's not how science is done. Science isn't based on an opinion. You don't have an opinion about gravity. Okay, and gravity, if you do have an opinion about gravity, let me assure you, gravity doesn't care. Okay, you go up a ladder and fall, you're going to, you're going to come down to the ground under the influence of gravity, and you're gonna smack the ground under the influence of gravity. Gravity does not care about your opinion. And that's the way real science works. Real science does not function based on opinions. But we went on Thursday, we went through the uh, 11 observations that uh, are involved in the diagnosis of uh, opioid addiction or opioid use disorder. And we laid out that they're nothing more than observations. And so what we're doing today is we're comparing um, uh, real medicine to, to, to the medicine of psychiatry. OK, when you do real medicine, it's not just based upon observations. It's, there's testing involved. And that was Dr. Karl Popper's point is it, there's got to be testing involved. If you can't prove something's false, then it's not science. Science is something that must must be uh, falsifiable. You've got to be able to prove it false. And that was what um, Dr. Karl Popper called his uh, uh, principle of falsification. Uh, very important. That was the yardstick by which he used to determine whether something was real science or fake science. In psychiatry, it didn't. It, it did make the cut. So what I, what I've done here on this page of the uh, citizens' petition is I've given some examples where where testing is done. Okay, and the uh, the first example that I give there is is a patient that goes to the emergency department with with chest pain. Okay, now you get to the emergency department and and the the the, the doctor there at the emergency department may believe you're having a heart attack, okay, and may even say, hey, I think you're having a heart attack, but that's just their opinion, okay? They're going to go through the process of determining whether that's true or false. They're going to go, they're going to look at, at chest x-rays, CAT scans of your chest, EKGs, blood work, you know, as much technology as possible and as much technology as is needed to derive the, the accurate diagnosis and whether or not you're having a heart attack. OK, it may turn out that you, you you didn't have a heart attack. You had pneumonia. OK, or, or you had a, a, you know, a, a, a blood clot in your lung called you know, pulmonary emboli, you know, some other reason to have chest pain. And it was not a heart attack. OK, and that's an example of where something could be proven false. I think you're having a heart attack. Well, I was I was wrong. Uh, the CAT scan showed it was a, uh, a blood clot in your lung, a pulmonary emboli. OK, and the. Uh, the second example that I give there is uh, uh, somebody goes to the emergency department. Uh, by the way, my background is emergency medicine, so I, I tend to think in terms of things that go to the emergency department uh, and tests that are done in the emergency department. Uh, that was that was what I did for decades. Uh, somebody goes to the emergency department and 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 uh, uh, they they can't move their their arm or leg on one side. It's called hemiparesis, acute hemiparesis, and and the the doctor in the emergency department may say. Hey, I think you're having a stroke, and and but still the doctor's going to get a, you know, a, a CAT scan or an MRI, and you know, let's say the CAT scan or the MRI it shows an area of the brain that's that's uh, not getting adequate blood flow. Well, hey, there you go. That's what a stroke is. It's in a, inadequate blood flow to a, a portion of the brain. Uh, uh, usually, uh, do some type of a, uh, uh, a clot or something something in the way of the blood flowing. Uh, that's what a stroke is. Uh, it's called a stroke because they were all these strokes of God. Um, 
but that's the uh, uh, again, it doesn't really matter what the what the physician in the emergency department thought you had. What matters was what the test proved that you had. OK. And then the third example that, that we give there uh, actually isn't from the emergency department, it, but it's, it's, a, it's a common one. Uh, 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 surgeon is evaluating someone referred for a, uh, a breast mass and, you know, hey, is this cancer? It's not cancer. And the surgeon may, may say, hey, I think this is cancer. OK, but still. OK, that's just an opinion. OK, and, and, and opinion is, is not, you know, real medicine. You're going to do a biopsy. You're going to take a, You're going to get a piece of that cancer. And you're going to send it to the pathologist. And they're going to make a, a, a series of slides from the um, from the sample obtained from the from the biopsy, and they're going to come back and tell you whether or not it's it's, uh, it's cancer. Maybe it is, maybe it didn't. Okay, but the point is, uh, it doesn't really matter what the opinion was at the beginning. What matters is what the test showed, and that's what's missing in psychiatry. There's no test. Okay, psychiatrist says, "Oh, I, I, you're a drug addict. Uh, you're an opioid addict." Okay, but there's no test. There's no way to prove it false. And if you can't prove it false, it's not science. And that's the point. And that's where things went, went, went. That's where the wheels came off the bus. That's where the wheels came off the bus on this opioid crisis is people treated the opinion of the psychiatrist as if it was real, as if it was real science. And, it, and it's not. It's just an opinion. And in this instance, it was wrong. OK, it wasn't opioid addiction. It wasn't a mental health issue. OK, the opioids caused genetic damage and the genetic damage caused a signal signature disease, that signature disease was a sickness that occurred when people tried to stop taking the opioids. They tried to stop taking the opioids. They got sick. The sickness was unbearable. They went back and had to buy more opioids. And the and the psychiatrist saw that and, oh, opioid addicts. No, you got it wrong, psychiatrist. And when you got it wrong, you harmed a lot of people. A lot of people were harmed. A lot of people dead. A lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people lost their children. The, 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 the carnage, the carnage. That is the result of the psychiatrist getting it wrong. And I, I, I really hold the FDA responsible because it was the FDA that elevated the psychiatrist to the level of being able to, um, uh, well, basically uh, grant uh, drugs to be manufactured based upon psychiatric diagnoses. Uh, drugs were manufactured based upon the diagnosis of of opioid addiction, opioid use disorder, uh, and the ability to manufacture a drug, well, there's money involved in that. Okay. And when, a, when, when the uh, FDA gives you the ability to manufacture a drug under a diagnosis, under an indication, that's a, that's a form of monopoly. Okay. It's not the only monopoly that's legal in the country, but that's a form of monopoly. And monopolies are very, are, are very valuable. So that's what we're up against now. We're up against these pharmaceutical companies that have these monopolies and they, they're not going to want to give it up. OK, I think we are have to take them to court to in order to get them to, to, to give that up. But um, that's a discussion for another day. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I'm running a little bit long here. We try to keep this, you know, six, seven minutes already up on eight minutes. Um, we respect everybody's time. Uh, please like and subscribe to us. Uh, Alex, thank you for everything that you do for this podcast. Uh, uh, please place this podcast on, on your social media, everybody else's social media. And we'll see you guys back here at one o'clock tomorrow. Thank you.